Help, I've heard about deep research agents, but how do they actually work? I had this idea for a DevOps AI agent, but where do I start? How do I get my agent to design better queries? We're gonna cover all of these questions in this episode of Context Window. Welcome to Context Window, everyone. This is a show where we cover some of the best questions from the Azure AI Foundry community via Discord and GitHub discussions in the hope of helping you on your AI building journey. And for the fun of it, we have a little AI trivia at the end. The community is now over 30,000 developers and I told them that you were coming. So they're all waiting for you. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure at all. Which you can do at the link below as well as find all the resources we cover in this episode. But these questions aren't gonna answer themselves, so let's get started. So our first question comes from a community member asking how deep research agents like the Foundry Deep Research Agent actually work. I like this question because it pleases the skeptic in me whenever I see the word deep. I always ask, but really, how deep is it? And in the case of deep research agents, it turns out pretty deep in terms of their workflows. Let's take a look at how the Foundry Deep Research Agent actually works, for example. To start out, the agent does some intent clarification. This is like when search engines ask, did you really mean this because spelling isn't your top skills? I'm not afraid to admit it. This is done by using an LLM and before any actual research gets done to make the original query better. Then the agent conducts the search using a tool like grounding with Bing search. This tool brings a curated set of both recent and high quality sources. This makes for a good blend of the research instead of just over relying on the most recent information. Once the search results are retrieved, the agent can read and reason through the, that content of each of the sources and then ends up delivering a nice report that is both comprehensive with citations and transparent by showing the reasoning paths it took to develop the research. But that's at a high level how it works, but it's best to do your own research by using it yourself, which you can find the resources to do so at the link below. The next question comes from a community member interested in creating an AI agent to handle DevOps work, like deployment of applications for customers and handling monitoring and reporting. First of all, this is a champion use case for AI agents for three reasons. First, it's complex enough to invest the time to building AI agents. Secondly, it has clear variables and tools that AI agents will use to complete a variety of tasks. And lastly, once it's all up and working, you can spend more time with your friends and family. Okay, the last one isn't an official reason, but it's important. So here's the approach. First, we can define multiple agents like an input processing agent to gather deployment parameters and a deployment agent to call tools like Azure DevOps, Pipelines, and Ansible for the deployment, and a monitoring and reporting agent to track deployments and provide feedback. On top of all of that, we will have an orchestration agent coordinating the whole show, if you will, by sharing and delegating the task between the agent. And we can use an agent framework like Semantic Kernel to help manage tasks between the agents and use structured templates like JSON or YAML for better configuration. And remember, always start small with a single customer or user base and evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. On to the last question, which is about how to guide AI agents around using specific tools and handling multiple queries. This is a great question because while we can work hard on building the best initial instructions for our agent, once they are out of their bird's nest and flying on their own with the actual users, how do we get them to make the best and right decisions? The first way is by using tool choice constraints that are a feature of many models that offer tool calling. So given the scenario, we can tell the agent to not call any tools, allow it to select tools when needed or use a fixed setting to require tool calls to be made. If you're working with a scenario that might require more than one tool call and you need to chain responses, meaning call one tool and get the response and use some part of that response for another call, 
you can add a requirement that your agent take a clarifying step between making the calls. This will then require the agent to reason why it's making an additional query, which then you can use to filter or stop if needed when you see this type of response. And lastly, another way for better steering of AI agents is to use a pre-processing agent. This agent's goal is to only take the message of the user and generate a more specific spec or instructions of what needs to be done before handing it off to another agent to do the generation and tool calling. But before we head off from this episode of Context Window, it's time for some AI trivia. First of all, big shout out to everyone who got last week's answer correct. Thanks for playing. Since we talked about AI agents and tool calling in this episode, our question this episode is what is the tool example found on the Azure AI Foundry function calling with Azure OpenAI docs page? So we have a code sample. It's got a tool. What does it do? And since I'm a nice guy, we're going to make this question multiple choice. A, current time lookup. B, weather lookup, or C, stock price lookup. Let me see those answers in the comments or major bonus points for posting it in Discord, which you can find at the link below. Until next time, this was Context Window.